Hello, my name is Daniel with Daniel's Heating and Air here in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, the way Google has affected my business, uh, we have got a lot of calls from Google. Right now it's July and we've had the best month ever. The only other thing I have it says is a B18. Hey, hey, oh, that's it. B18, baby, that's my favorite number. <laughs> B18999. You can hear the office going, 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 going. That phone, what? like, nine, nine. right That's before we were calling number. us, we got, like, five people Thank on you. it. Yes, ma'am. The, uh, okay. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. And then okay. what is your uh, domain? Okay, how much? Domain. Route66hvac.com. Perfect. Do you have them in stock? Route66av.com? Uh, HVAC. Okay. HVAC.com. Please. Okay. You ready? It'll be two four. Nervous, 72. but let's go. Okay, here Show. we go. And it's S H three. Sorry, S C H I M L. All right, Thrive Nation, on today's show, we're talking to an HVAC man, an HV. It's a, what, what does the so HV and the AC stand for? Brandon, okay, pop quiz, what's the HVAC stand for? You're gonna Hitting, get. ventilation, and air conditioning. Yes, this guy, I'm telling you, he knows his trade. He's actually in his office right now. So, folks, if you hear somebody on the phone, it's because they're always selling. They're always doing customer service. They are a real company. Carter, I am fired up to have him on today's show. Carter, this is your longtime client here, Route 66 HVAC. Oh, yeah, and I'm equally fired up. Oh, yes. Okay, so I got to ask you, uh, we've been working with you guys for a while, and my understanding is you guys are getting more leads. Brandon, are the good amount of leads from the increasing, sir? Uh, well, I can say before we started business with you guys, we didn't really have any because mm. we just weren't using Google at all. And now... I, we're getting so many Google leads, so many like word of mouth and cultural uh, leads out of the community uh, outreaches and stuff we're doing. And now we're having phones just going left and right phone calls and I need more phones or we're just going to have to answer calls. You know, it, it's going crazy. Uh, if you see that board back there, that's, what it looks like right now in the schedule. So that's your schedule behind you. Yes. So you, in look your at how full that is. Carter, uh, you had something you wanted to say there. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say you're gonna have to get the whole two phone situation going on at once. Have learn how to have two conversations at once. Yeah, definitely. Hey, let me let me tell you something real quick about this. This is uh, uh let me see here. Uh, this is a true story. I, I don't know if it'll if I can prove it though. Right now, I want to prove it. They're, the Tulsa World they came out to my uh, office back in the day, and they did a a let me see. They did an article on me. Let's see local DJ spinning. Let me see if I can find it. And they did an article on me. And when they did the article, they took a photo of me. And in the article, I'm holding two phones. I I because I'm, I'm literally I'm taking a phone call. And I'm on another one. And then the picture guy took a photo and I wasn't yeah. prepared for that. So, so back to your business. Now you guys, your, your phone is ringing more than ever. Is that, is that an accurate statement, sir? Yes. There's like never a time in the day where the, someone's not on the phone. And most of the time it's two people on the phone at the same time. Now, Carter, uh, in addition to that, you guys, so step one, we've been I'm just I'm trying to go over some kind of our, our stack of wins here. Mm -hmm. You guys, you, we've increased the, the lead flow. That's wonderful. Next is that you guys went from a startup to where you're yes. actually yes. now on pace to, uh, you know, head to a million dollar business. Tell us about the, the growth rate. Tell us about because you really went from a startup uh, to a, a, a success story. Uh, from start point of where we got in contact with you guys, we actually did cross the million dollar mark, uh, from where we started with you guys. And I mean, we were also profitable, even though by like in the first year with all the mistakes that we made going in the business at the beginning, cause we didn't know, you know, we're not business people, we're HVAC people. Right. So and we made a couple of mistakes along the road, and we we're still able to be profitable in the first year. Now, so is again, this is, this is great stuff. Now, Carter, you guys are also rolling out rolling out recurring maintenance packages. Tell us about this because I think people, a lot of our clients we work with in the HVAC space, 
in the uh, optometry space, in the legal space, uh, I mean, clients we work with in all different industries, they're always trying to find a way to generate recurring revenue. Tell us about these recurring maintenance packages, Carter. What, what, what kind of the vision is here? Yeah, so the recurring revenue is great because as a business owner, it gives you a little bit of security, but it always has to be a value add for your customers. Otherwise, what's the point? And so uh, we have come up with, or they've kind of crafted it over time where we have two different recurring maintenance packages and just lets the customer choose which one works best for them. And it's a lot of, it, it helps the customers because it's a proactive way to afford some HVAC solutions. And I think what happens is, Brandon, I think a lot of people think, I don't qualify to have success. They watch a video like this and they go, ah, he's a genius. Brandon's a genius. He's the golden baby. I can't possibly do this. What do you say to somebody who's, thinking about reaching out to work with myself, Carter, and the team, what, what would you say to somebody who's, you know, thinking about coming to a conference or thinking about scheduling a 13-point assessment? They should straight up do it. I mean, because the advertisement that got us there on your end was a Facebook ad. It said no BS. And we went to that first conference back in July, about a year ago. And that's exactly what it was. It wasn't, you didn't beat around the bush, didn't try to do the upsells or anything like that to try to like, and like, and another thing, you can be this tier or, and another thing, we'll add this. No, there wasn't any of that. It was just straightforward. This is exactly what you need to do in order to make your business succeed. And it's really awesome that we were actually able to cross the million because I think the average startup in HVAC space, like Chuck in the truck, whatever by himself is usually only like a hundred thousand for the first year. And we did approximately 10 times that. Now uh, we, we charge a flat rate. We're a flat rate service. It's one seven zero zero per month. We have a weekly meeting with every client. So Carter, you meet with these wonderful guys every week. Yes, I do. And uh, in the meeting, the purpose of the meeting is to help you grow your business. But it's a flat rate service where we, you know, we just charge it. How much does that help you, Brandon, as a as a business that went from a startup to where you guys are, are at, knowing that you're only going to pay a flat rate of seventeen hundred as opposed to some variable, ambiguous fee that may may or may not be charged? It's predictable. I know exactly what I'm getting charged every single month, and like I can arrange my expenses to be able to cover all that. And it just makes it real easy on my end, trying to track it. That is the move. Now, I'm pulling this up here again. Other things, um, search engine optimization. I think a lot of companies, a lot of people, they want to do online advertising, marketing. And, uh, you know, Carter, they they they, they come to us and they, they have kind of a woo-woo idea of how it might work. Mm-hmm. Because there's all these marketing companies that pitch these theories on what, 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 what might work. You might try this. You might look at this. This might this might get make, get make you go viral. This might get some leads. This might create a TikTok thing for you. This might create an Instagram reel that really goes viral. You might get some. Well, this might work. This might move the needle. This might, there's all that kind of. This might get your name out there. There's all those kind of marketing jargon. Mm-hmm. But you guys have we have a linear plan. We're taking you down, Brandon. How much does it help for you to know that you have a linear plan and that Carter's going to help you track the results every week? Uh. It just, like I've been saying, it makes it predictable. I I know what's coming ahead because I've read ahead of where I need to be and where I can see in the future what's coming up. Uh, it also keeps me on the same page as we're going uh, in the process of getting better because, like, we're not we're not perfect by any means, you know, as a company. That's the whole point of training and the whole point of coaching to where we can get to that point, you know? Now, um, the photography, videography, web development, search engine, graphic design, we do all of that included, plus we do mm-hmm. consulting. So it's kind of like you hire a CMO, a chief marketing officer, and a CFO, a chief financial mm-hmm. officer, to work with you simultaneously to help you. How much does that help knowing that Carter and there's a team helping you guys and you don't have to go find separate vendors? Uh, quite a lot because I don't know anything about website building or coding or anything. Like I got to log into the background on the WordPress and stuff, but great. I don't go anywhere into that because okay. I, I could mess it up really easily. I don't understand what's going on back there, but it's doing stuff and it's working. Uh, and knowing that I have a t- like an IT team or web development team 
is great because that means I don't have to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to on a one-time purchase to go get a website that I don't understand the back office, the run, or any of the coding. Now, video testimonials, you know, one of the things when we help someone grow their company, I, I want to encourage everybody, if you're out there listening right now, there's 14 steps is how I look at it. And, and Carter, you know, you start with establishing the goals, then you move on to branding, then you move on to marketing, then you move on to sales, then you move on to fulfillment, then you move on to hiring, firing, training, retaining. It, it's all of those systems. So when someone says, what's the most important aspect of growing a business, I would argue it's the execution of all 14 steps simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Talk about Carter, the video reviews and why that's been important for root for team route 66 here. Well, to their credit, they've really gotten out there and just asked everyone for video reviews and they've gotten some really good ones. And what that does is it just builds value prior to, you know, me going out to deliver an estimate. It's like, you already have, you know, 20, 30. I mean, you guys are had added 10 last week. You know, you have 20 or 30 people positively reviewing you on your Google listing on your website, it's like that helps the sales process on the back end a lot. And so that's been really important. And, and to your guys' credit, you've been great at getting collecting those video reviews. I'm going to pull this up here. We've got these 14 steps, 14 steps on how to grow a successful business. If you want to download my newest book, A Millionaire's Guide to Becoming Sustainably Rich, you can download it. And the, you too can follow along here, folks. But here are the 14 steps. And I'm just going to go through these here. I'll try to zoom in so people can actually see it. Um, one, we establish the revenue goals. Box two, we figure out the break-even goals. Three, we uh, define the number of hours willing to work. Four, we determine the unique value proposition. Five, we nail down the branding. Six, we create a three-legged marketing stool. Seven, we focus on sales. And I told you that about this picture. It does exist. Look, it's here. It's great. Tulsa it's World great came there it is. and said, hey. Could we do a, a photo shoot with you? And I said, sure. What time are you guys going to show up? They said, I'll be here around this time or that time. And they show up, and I'm literally on the phone waiting. I'm on the phone with a bride booking her wedding, but then there's a DJ over here who just called in. And so I'm doing the two-phone thing. And that became sort of a, a legendary cover of the business section there. In my opinion, once you get into the sales part of the path, that's where this starts to happen. And now you got to mm -hmm. have a, kind of a sober mind to help you figure out what is it costing to acquire a new customer? And are we being organized? Because you can't build an organization if you're not organized. Um, are you tackling that part of it, Brandon? Are you guys right there where you're starting to put uh, the, the cross the T's, put the I, uh, put the dot on the I? Are you starting to, to kind of bevel and refine the systems now? Or where are you out of the process? We got, we've laid the groundwork and we are in that position where we're, flipping over into refining the system that's working for us. And every single little day we find one little, like that 1% of correction every single day to make our system more efficient. And um, it's just, it's just going, you know, and now it's I'm, I'm working. Taking, now I'm taking notes here. So I'll let you go in just a second. I'm taking notes. My final thing I wanted to clarify. Uh, I, I, I'm quoting you. I wrote this down, Carter. I typed it up okay, here. It's yeah. a, we're getting so many leads and word of mouth leads uh, and word of mouth leads. We're having phones going left and right, and I need more phones. That's what I think you just said. So I got to ask you here, yep. um, you know, what do you say to somebody who's thinking about reaching out for a coach, for a consultant, somebody to help them in the way we've helped you? What do you say to somebody who's thinking about going to thrivetimeshow.com, scheduling a free 13-point assessment? They're thinking about coming to the conference. What do you say? You're going to need to buy three phones after signing up with uh, Clay Clark, and then you're going to have to figure out how to get your virtual phone so you can have a phone within a phone within a phone. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm quoting you. I want to make sure this is right. It says here, you're going to need to buy – this guy's like a phone salesman. You're going to need, need to buy three phones. I accept commissions. <laughs> okay, but I mean, would, how, would, how would you describe the overall experience? Because you know how it is. People are thinking about working with us. How do you describe the overall impact it's made on your business? Uh, every single week, like as we're going through it, it helps me form habits, right? Because this is not – something normal that anybody is just going to know day one. Like you're, you're not born with these skills. Uh, so like the first thing you're going to learn is how to schedule your time and manage your time management, right? Block out everything and figure out how your week is going to go, do your to-do list. And once you get that done, you really start fine tuning your marketing in the Google 
And once you do that, then you start looking inward on your company to try to, uh, via osmosis or just actively progress, getting everybody working in your company to also reflect the habits that you build along the way. You know, th this show is so hot. I must put on sunblock to watch it while editing. It is so, it's so good. Brandon, I really appreciate you carving out time for us. I really respect uh, you guys, the work you're putting in. Carter, thanks for leading these guys down the proven path here. I'm super excited to check in with you at our December conference and see where you're at. Perhaps we'll have a new success story here in December to share. Again, thank you so much. And for people that are in the area, uh, one more time, that website, you're in Oklahoma. What's the uh, uh, web address there, sir? The web address is www route66hvac.com. And if you're in uh, uh, Delaware, go ahead and call them. I mean, pay the, it's worth the Why travel not, yeah. fee. You might as well sure. pay for 18 hours of travel each way to have a guy fix your HVAC. It's a tourist destination, folks. It's Route 66 HVAC. Now, folks, I don't want people traveling to Tulsa just to visit the home office of Route 66 HVAC. So if you do that, at least hire them to fix somebody else's AC. All right. Thanks again there, Brandon. I really do appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. -bye. Hello, my name is Daniel with Daniel's Heating Air here in uh, Amarillo, Texas. I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, how my life was when I was invoicing customers. It was total chaos in the office every time we had to invoice a customer. Um, when it was time to uh, give a customer a bill, they turn into a ninja. They'd ghost me. They'd take off all of a sudden. They had things to do. And uh, that caused the office to uh, spend half the day, almost every day, chasing down customers that owed us. At one point, uh, there was a time when we had a total of sixty to seventy thousand dollars that was owed to us, and we were chasing these people down constantly. And after we stopped invoicing customers, uh, we ended up um, coming up with uh, with a new game plan. And that game plan was to uh, offer them that $7 diagnostic fee for uh, first time customers. And then we would, uh, in order to save their spot on the schedule, uh, we would need to take payment. Um, so we would either take a uh, check over the phone or the credit card number. And uh, this has improved, um, improved so much, um, taken away so much headache from, from my business. And uh, now, the people in the office can uh, focus on things they really need to be focusing on instead of um, chasing down customers that, that owe us money. So this has, um, this has drastically improved um, the business and a lot less stress, definitely. Hello, my name is Daniel with Daniel's Heating and Air. Having the uh, group interviews has drastically improved my business. Uh, my employees are no longer holding me hostage. Uh, we have uh, group interviews every Wednesday, and uh, we bring in uh, the best uh, best people with the best attitudes and just willing to work and um, be part of our team. And if they're the people that we currently have are not holding up their end, we just we let them go, and uh, we bring the next people up. It's been a great process. My name is Mickey Mahalik, and I own Capital Waste Solutions. You know, jumping out on my own was my biggest fear. Um, I really love that corporate safety net of a consistent paycheck, knowing that we had the corporate background structure to stay there, the standard operating procedures, you know, everything had a book and a policy of how things had to be done. Unfortunately, that puts you in a box sometimes, and Clay helped me to release that and understand that, hey, go, take off, explore, find new areas, and it was really the confidence to jump outside the box. Anytime you start something new or you have to reach out, I feel it brings a level of exposure uh, by admitting, maybe I don't know as much as I put off about sales or marketing. When Clay came to speak with me, he said, it's okay to not know everything. And, and that really uh, was a game changer for me. You know, Clay's helped me probably the most with our graphic design on our website. Uh, that's one thing that I do not claim to know anything about. In fact, I'm better off throwing the computer out the window than I am using it. What was nice about working with the guys at Thrive 15 and working with Clay was 
I could go in with a silly sketch on paper, pencil and paper, and I could say, hey, this is what I wanna look like. Or they'd make it so simple. They'd pull up my phone and say, hey, FaceTime with me real quick and point to what you don't like. And they worked on my level instead of me having to meet them at their level. And not only that, but the upbeat atmosphere is, is fun. You come in and it's all about you. And it's nice to be the one that gets to drink from the fountain instead of constantly pouring into someone else. Why not learn something new? Why not admit to yourself that, hey, I can learn more, I can be better, I can be greater. You know, as a basketball player in college, I was nothing without the coaches that invested me day after day after day to help me work on a move or a play that I maybe I wasn't the best at, and that fueled me to be successful in our game. It's those little battles that win the war, and when you have Clay Clark, it's a coach, it's a general that helps you through the battle, so ultimately you win that war. I know it's exciting listening to a podcast where somebody is calling other people, but this is how it happens. This is how we go to that phone technology, and we'll know if he's ghosting us if he doesn't pick up. No pressure at all, just email. Here we go. Just We'll count the number of rings as it goes along. Mm. Mm. I, I say happen? three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my money on three. Mm. How's it going, Clay? Good, man. How are you? Doing good. Hey, are, at all. hey are, you, uh, uh, are, are the guys learning stuff down there in Amarillo? Yes, they learned a lot. They're, they're, uh, they, they learned a, a lot. It was, a, it was a lot of fun having those guys. They're a bunch of good guys. I think we had to see why you made ben, ben a manager over there. Yeah, Ben, I mean, and for the listeners out there that don't know, we're in the process of opening up a snow bear heat and air in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I say we, John and I, I'm uh, putting up 49% of the cash. John's putting up 51% of the cash, so it's his problems. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he, uh, the, the guys went down to Amarillo. We had Ben uh, down there, Jonathan, and uh, Ty, I believe, right? Yes. And so you're teaching them the dark arts of uh, HVAC. And we have a listener here uh, today here, Daniel. His name is James. Uh, James, meet Daniel. Hey, Daniel. How you doing? Doing pretty good, James. How you doing, sir? Doing well, doing well. Now, uh, James is a guy who, who, who has a business that's uh, doing well. Um, uh, James, can you explain what you do for a living and, and what your business does? Yeah, so uh, we're electrical contractors, um, electricians, to just put it simply. Um, so we provide electrical services in the, uh, for residential and commercial, and uh, soon uh, we'll be doing some industrial work as well. Got it. And so you have a few questions here for, for Daniel. So I'm going to let you ask Daniel any questions you have about – uh, I, I believe we have a lot of questions focused on commercial work and invoicing and these kinds of things. So you can ask Daniel any questions you want because he has become the master of working on commercial projects. More, more so uh, questions yeah. in the realm of the, uh, uh, the estimating on commercial projects. Uh, you know, as you well may know, the uh, estimating on residential product, uh, projects is, is relatively simple um, but uh, can get pretty pretty complicated when you get into the uh, the commercial uh, projects. How do you handle your, your commercial bids? Well, the best practice for making the switch from residential to commercial is uh, basically preparing uh, to charge the customer 15 to 20% more than what you would charge for a uh, residential job because, uh, because the liability on it is a lot higher. Right. So higher so risk. So yeah. you need to kind of be, yeah. So you need to kind of beef up your, um, your insurance and uh, prepare to stay at those jobs a lot longer. And, and the way, and the way I do it, um, kind of, uh, I'll tell you a little bit the way I've, I've kind of, uh, priced the commercial stuff, um, was think of every possible job you could think of, put it on paper. Next, think of everything that would go into, uh, to that one job from man hours, material, office staff hours, and uh, don't forget to calculate your taxes in there. Um, my CPA and myself, we put together a formula where we just plug stuff into an Excel spreadsheet. We went through each one of these jobs, and uh, that way we get a true net profit on, uh, on each job. And, and uh, after, after you've done that, you put everything on paper, you put it in a price book. That way you're not constantly thinking how much I need to charge for this job. You just flip to it. And, and um, what we're using now for instead of a, a, a price book, we have a program called Field Edge. It's a software, and that helps the office staff uh, stay on schedule. Um, it has every job possible 
um, in the, in that software. So uh, if one of the technicians is looking for a um, looking for a job, they just put in the keyword um, condenser fan motor. In your case, it'd be like a plug or something, or a switch, or a breaker box, and it pulls up the price for that breaker box. So so we're never losing money. We're, we're making sure we're getting our uh, getting about 35% net profit or true net profit. Right. That was going to be my next question. Kind of what is your range that you shoot for in terms of uh, overall um, uh, profit in the, in the job? What's the percentage on that? So, so you're saying you like to go for what percentage of profit there, Daniel, just so all the listeners can, can understand. Residential. I like aiming for about 30 to 35% net profit. Uh, yep. And, and like I said, on commercial, you want to charge 15 to 20 percent more uh, because there's there's a lot of things that can go wrong on a uh, commercial job. So we're looking we're looking at 45 uh, 55 percent net profit after a, uh, on a commercial job. Let me ask you this: um, I, I don't know if you run into this doing HVAC, but um, you know dealing with like a lot of these general general contractors, uh, you know you'll have some kind of a change here or there. Um, how do you deal with the change orders or, you know, cause a lot of these general contractors like to slip something in the last second, you know, they'll like to say, Oh, Hey, you know what? Uh, I, I need this over here too. Uh, can we go ahead and do that? What, how do you deal with that? Well, again, that's where, that's where our software comes in, uh, comes into play. Um, on that software, uh, uh, the customer has to, has to sign off on everything that, that he's, um, that he's uh, agreed to to pay for. So he hasn't signed off on it and told us it's okay. Well, um, we'll have to get him to sign again. On a, uh, we'll have to uh, write him up another bid and get him to sign off on it again. Right. Basically, because after like he signs off on it, he he's he has to pay for it. Right, right. Yeah, I, I figured that. I mean, we you know dealing with uh, general contractors just. You know, uh, I've I've learned you've got to be super detailed um, with everything that's in, involved in the job scope, and then um, you know because I think general contractors, even just regular customers, will see what they can get added in. You know, um, at the you know uh, after you've already done everything that you guys originally um, agreed to. So, uh, but I was just curious to know how you kind of dealt with that. I mean, it sounds like we're on the same page. Um, I put it. All the wordings and verbiage that went into that document for the customer actually signs to agree um, for us to do the work. I sent that to, to the lawyer, which is uh, Scott, and he uh, signed off on it and said, yeah, that looks good. So so go ahead and load that into your field edge software. That way everything's legal and and uh, they can't come back later on and say, well, you said we could, you were supposed to do this and you didn't do it. Hey, you signed off on it. And, and as soon as they sign off on it, it sends them an email right away. Uh, Daniel, I want to make sure I'm breaking this down for all the listeners so they get it. And, and Dr. Breck, I want to get your take on this, too. Sure. But what happens is, um, and then the name of your company, it's ECS Electric. Am I correct? E ECS Electric, yes. Uh, what's what's your website? It's uh, ECSElectricLLC.com. What, uh, um, how long have you been in business? Since the beginning of 2018, January 2018. Are you growing? Yes, exponentially. Awesome. What, how much have you grown this year? As a percentage. Um, we did about 300% from, let's see, the end of 2018, we were, or 2018 to end of 2019. Okay, and how long have you, how long have you been, been a client with us? Um, not even a year yet. Yeah, Maybe. and so this is, I want to make sure the listeners get this, because this is, this is important. Um, and Breck, I want to get your take on this. we got so much wisdom here. I want to see if we can distill it all. Um, one is you right now, if you're listening today, you've got to get serious about your pricing. Okay, so let, right away, let's go ahead and do what Daniel said to do. Let's sit down with our accountant this week, action item, and let's properly price out stuff. Breck, for years you wandered in the wilderness of very busy and unprofitable as a chiropractor. Uh -huh. Can yeah, you absolutely. preach the good news to somebody out there who just won't sit down <laughs> and figure out their pricing? Well, that was actually one of the first things I did with my coach was uh, to sit down and figure out where are we at in the market and uh, you know what can be done differently than what we've currently been doing or, or historically doing. And uh, our pricing was definitely something that was uh, brought up. It stood out as a you know red flag uh, pretty much immediately. And so uh, you know he challenged me to call all of our competitors, 
uh, or a number of our competitors and figure out, okay, where, where really is the, the price point um, in the area? Because uh, he knew that I wanted to still be economical and affordable and um, that I didn't want to price myself out of reach for our, our patients. But at the same time, he felt like I was clearly leaving money on the table and he wasn't wrong. Um, and so we did that. And uh, it was time to make a, a change in our price structure. Um, and that happened two years ago now. And uh, there's a little pushback on that. Anytime you make change, there's going to be a little bit of pushback. About but 10 overall, or 15% of cu customers aren't, aren't happy with it, maybe? Um, how, I don't even think it was that high, honestly. Okay. Um, but uh, And there's different things. Some of the things we did were uh, we had some different giveaways that we were doing on a routine basis. Yep. And I would say the, the patients were more upset of how we changed the giveaway structure. So, you know, there's a certain entitlement. Once you've done yep. something, there's an expectation you'll continue to do it that same way. Um, and that was inherited from a former partner. Yeah. And so uh, I looked at that and said, okay, this isn't really sustainable moving forward. We'll just adjust it a little bit. Right. And that small adjustment actually made a, a bigger issue for the patients. Um, and that was where we give away a massage after so many visits. So yeah. that went from every fifth visit uh, to every seventh visit. And that little that little switch definitely ruffled more feathers than increasing the pricing. So step one, though, step one, we got to meet with our accountant or our bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. Let's go over the pricing. Let's let's let's. Daniel, what what profit margin do you recommend if you're in the air conditioning business? What what profit percentage would you recommend if you're dealing with residential uh, clients? Uh, residential clients, we're looking for a thirty to thirty five percent um, profit margin, net profit. Got it. And then so then then step two, use the software, a software. Um, I would recommend Field Edge. That's what uh, Daniel uses. Um, or use Excel. I don't care. But have your standardized pricing written down somewhere. And what I would do, um, Mr. Cruise Missile, is I would always refer to, a, to a, a partner who is rigid about pricing. So as an example, if I am meeting with a customer and they go, man, you're a lot more than you were last year. Right. And you go, well, I have a partner now I work with, and he sets all the prices. And so I don't have the ability to do that. But this is what uh, – and, Daniel, I want to get your take on that. Why do you have to be firm on those prices? Once you log those prices and you put them into your software, why do you got to be firm about those prices? You want to be firm about the prices because we're in it to make money. We're not in it to lose money. Hmm. And, and I, don't give, I don't give the uh, technicians that work for me any authority to change the prices they can't go into the software and adjust those prices the only people that can adjust those prices would be my office manager there it is and what happens is is that uh the customer always wants to pay less money and the employees always want to pay raise always every employee <laughs> wants to make more money and every mm -hmm. customer wants to pay less and if you compromise on either side Pretty soon you're not profitable. Now, step three that Daniel just mentioned, he said you need to charge 15% more for commercial jobs. Uh, Daniel, please explain again in, in, in detail why you have to charge 15% more for commercial jobs and, and the potential liability that's there. Well, it, the liability on that is is a lot bigger than it would be on the residential house. So if you're working on a residential house, I mean, you may – one of our technicians may step through the roof, and that, that will just cost me about $150. We're working on a uh, commercial job currently, and and if uh, if the crane operator drops that air conditioner through the roof of that commercial building, that's going to cost me thousands of dollars. So so liability is a lot higher. So so you have to uh, take uh, take into account if something does go wrong, um, you have to charge that 15 to 20 percent more just in case something does go wrong. And this is uh, Nathan with Complete Carpet. We've got great business owners here. I want to throw one other little caveat in there for the people that are listening to this. Um, remember that it starts also with the value and the, and the good quality work that you're doing first. In the absence of value, price is the only thing that matters. So if you are looking at bumping your price up a little bit, oh, yeah. start off by making more value and more quality. And then when you bump your price up, your customers won't notice that much. We bumped our prices up just like Dr. Breck did. Mm -hmm. And that helped us tremendously. And I was, I thought, oh, we will just, a bunch of customers run off. We lost almost nobody because everyone said, well, we're not going to use anyone else and yeah. you're still affordable. We just became profitable. Right. It's just really, really, really important that everybody out there understands we've got to learn to price properly. We can't have this poverty mentality where we're busy, but we're not profitable. That's a, that's a dangerous place that you can get stuck in. 
Well, yeah, and then you talk about scalability and plans for the future and, I mean, all of these different things. If your prices aren't what they should be or they're constantly adjusting, then those numbers are uh, an elusive thing. They're always moving. The target's never the same. Um, you know, you can't plan for next year when you don't, you know, the price was $45 a day and it might be 50 tomorrow and da-da-da. I mean, like Daniel's saying, I mean, there's a clear this this box cost X and this is yep. that. And then you have the numbers to back up and, and actually project and know what is going on, what's happening. I know exactly if I want to make a certain amount of money, I have to see a certain number of patients there because we make so much per patient there with the adjustment and we can factor that in and we can adjust and I can know, is it time to hire somebody? Can I afford to hire somebody at what rate and at, at what position? Well, so we can make solid decisions without, you know, really wondering or being scared of it. And if you're thinking about dropping a uh, commercial AC unit through the roof of a commercial building, <laughs> this just in, don't do that. Now, uh, another qu uh, question that, that, the, that the cruise missile has here is uh, how to schedule the extra time needed to tackle bigger commercial jobs. Uh, uh, can you maybe uh, can you yeah, maybe dive absolutely. into that question, uh, what you want to ask Daniel here? You, 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 can you dive into that, what you want yeah, to ask? Yeah, Daniel, Daniel? Um, obviously the commercial bids for me, uh, they're, they're taking four times, five times the amount of time a, a residential bid would take. Obviously that has something to do with familiarity, but also just the complexity of them, um, at least in the electrical uh, industry. So what, what do you do to kind of get through those commercial bids uh, quicker, and how do you make time for that? So um, we, we do have a, use that software um, called Field Edge. And that helps the office staff stay on schedule along with all the technicians and helpers. And in that software, there is uh, every job is priced. So they can go through a commercial project and bid an air conditioner. So that commercial air conditioner is priced in that software. So all they have to do is, is uh, check and see the size of the unit, and and um, and then they can uh, correspond that to Field Edge, and Field Edge will pop up the price right away, and, and we'll know exactly is, how how much time it's going to take to do that, um, uh, replace that commercial unit. Right, because you can refer back to uh, maybe some of your past projects too, and also kind of gauge off. How of much that. is Field Edge per month? Isn't it like a thousand bucks a month? It's only two hundred and fifty dollars a month, and then it's fifty dollars per device. Each technician has an iPad that they carry around with them, so when all that software is loaded on there, they can take payments. They can take, um, uh, they could send out quotes right away. Yep. They um, all their jobs are on there. There's so much it can do. It tracks them. For all the listeners out there, if you are an electrician, a contractor of any kind. Air conditioning, I recommend that you check out the Field Edge software because it's going to take you probably, uh, Cruz, probably you know 20 hours to load in all the variables. And it's going to ask you for the price of this and that. And then you're just sitting there putting data in it. But mm -hmm. once you have it, I mean, Daniel, wouldn't you say even on the most complex commercial jobs now, it maybe takes 10 minutes of clicking around to get a, a, a quote? Yes. And I usually scary, uh, schedule about one hour per quote so they're in and out quick yeah i, I do have another Less question an hour most time uh daniel i have another question so um kind of getting like uh in residential it's it's pretty easy to kind of secret shop and figure out what your competitors are you know um pricing mm. and whatnot i mean you can i've done it we you know we install generators and you know so i've had other electrical companies come out and bid for a generator install at a, at a home um, and that's easy. I can get somebody to, you know, to do that. But when it comes to the commercial side of it, how, how do you price against your competitors? How do you know what the market is on these certain items um, or, you know, the, these different jobs? Uh, how do you, I mean, have you been able to do any secret shopping? What would you say about that? Yes, and that's uh, one thing we, we do just about once every year. Uh, this year we had, um, I have a, a lady technician. And she had, she called about 15 companies. And out of those 15 companies, maybe three or four actually showed up mm. or even returned her call and, and went and uh, gave her a quote on the air conditioning unit. So, so, so I kind of priced it off of the uh, local contractors here. And, and I'm 
still at my profit margins, uh, 30, 35% for uh, residential. So we didn't, we do the secret shopping. Well, I'm talking more on a commercial level. I mean, are you able to do any secret shopping to see what the other, you know, those other contractors are doing on a commercial side? Um, that I actually have not done. I just, I just put my profit margins where they need to be. And that's if, if the customer doesn't want to go with it, and let me move on to the next. Let me next make sure job. that th- let me make sure the listeners get what he's saying. What he did is he is definitely mystery shopped on the residential side. Oh yeah, and then no matter what, and then he just takes his profit margin for residential and bumps it up by fifteen mm-hmm. percent. And I can tell you that that is pretty much what most commercial people do. Now I can tell you what I've done for commercial stuff. If you want to do, I mean, if you want to mm-hmm. go that level, I've I've, I've done this. So when I had a DJ connection, I was trying to get into more commercial, like doing uh, Christmas parties for Southwest Airlines or Bama Pie or Boeing or whatever. Big corporate events. Big corporate events Mm -hmm. where instead of doing just private weddings. And so I actually would go as far as to book them. (laughs) So like I would actually hire like big uh, entertainment companies to provide entertainment for my staff. Or mm-hmm. for just random people, I would call a client who I knew who had a business and say, hey, you go book the other guys and I'll pay for it. I just want to see how does that process work? How do they bid you? How do they quote you? And I was able to just get all, all the information that way. So I've, I've paid for many, many Christmas parties <laughs> for people who uh, uh, are, are friends of mine mm-hmm. in order to get them to use my competition to find that out. So that's one way to do that's it. And I got it. a yeah. super dirty move that uh, we've oh, used really? quite a few times. and. <laughs> If you are doing the bid process or you're going through it, yeah. if you make a good relationship with the person that you're going through, I have at least a dozen plus times. Uh, it's how I ended up getting the Tulsa Housing Authority contract and a couple others was the person I was with. I said, hey, I want to do the best job for you. I want to do, you know, what's what's some of the other bids you've gotten here? And they'll say, oh, yeah, the guy who was just before you, the Auto Dot Company, they said that they could do the whole project for around this. I've and had these them give numbers me their actual yeah. quotes. I've had them actually forward emails. The other, yep, really? I've had that happen. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah. And yeah. I say, hey, I want to provide. I want to. I would love to come in and be your guy. So I, I want to see if I'm in the ballpark, or maybe I can beat your guys. And they're like, oh yeah, I'll show you what it is. Can you beat this? Now, and yeah. I see their numbers completely. Now, Daniel, okay. I know you've got uh, church here, so I've got you for 90 more seconds here. I got uh, two two final hot hot questions for you. Uh, commercial contracting. Okay. What should your team consist of? Do you have a job site manager, a, a foreman, a journeyman? Talk about. I know. I know commercial HVAC is different from electrical, but there's a lot of parallels and similarities. What should a commercial contracting team consist of? So a commercial contracting team, we have a lead technician, a technician, and normally two helpers. We'll have about four people on the job um, at all times. Some of those units get pretty big to move around. And um, as as the guys, Ben and John and Ty, they, they kind of saw how big these units were. They, some of them were just as big about as big as a small house. So what? They, um, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're huge. Oh boy, <laughs> you have to buy some insurance there. You deal with these uh, cooling towers. So, so you said uh, that, that that one was not a cooling tower, but they were package units actually. Oh wow, wow. So you you're 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 suggesting or you're saying that you your team consists of a lead technician, then a technician and two helpers. Is that right? Yes. And uh, I will say we have a great show we did where we interviewed uh, the founder of a of one of the uh, most uh, successful pool companies in Oklahoma called Pool Creations. We interviewed Jeff, and in that show, Jason could give it to you because it hasn't come out yet. He explains how he does his jobs, but essentially the lead technician shows up on the job site every single day and makes mm-hmm. sure that when people leave the job site, it's clean, it's complete, it's finished, and it's just kind of having that 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 person. It goes on to the job site every day and actually physically shows up, keeps them from drifting. And that's the top pool company in Oklahoma. And the final question was, um, should there be a separate role for commercial and residential jobs? Uh, Cruise Missile, what do you mean by that? What, 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 what does this question mean? I want to make sure we're a- asking uh, Daniel the right question. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure, actually. I don't know if I phrased it that way. Oh, but, um, maybe I am mangling your questions. I'm a bad bad host. Yeah. So, uh, did you have any final question <laughs> for Daniel while we have him here? Um. No, I think that I think he's covered it uh, pretty much. Um, my my main questions were on the the estimating side. Got of it. it. Yeah. So Daniel, I've got my my final question, and I'll let you take off here. Um, you've grown Snow Bear Heat and Air uh, quite a bit this year. Um, how much have you grown Snow Bear Heat and Air over the past twelve months? Over the past twelve months, this year we made about uh, three 
350,000 more than we made last year. Ooh. So, so we're, we're at uh, mil, 1 million, one, almost 1. 1.2 million. Up from 900,000 ish. Maybe 850. Yes. And uh, you've been a client uh, working with Andrew and myself now for how, how long? It's it's been about nine months, ten months. Why do you actually implement everything? Like, what is wrong with you? Why do you implement everything? Because Pastor Brian told me he said, "Here's the deal: if you work with Daniel, I'm telling you, he's a diligent guy. He's going to execute everything." And because I met you through when I spoke at his church, that's how we met. What makes right. you an right. implementer? Why are you not just a hearer of the words? Why why do you actually implement? Well, I would describe my, my weekly coaching meetings with you and Andrew as, uh, as very productive from going over all the action items, looking at all the numbers, fig- figuring out ways we can grow, and and some, some of the things that you guys um, have actually uh, helped me figure out, which I had no idea about, uh, would be the systems on uh, how to hire people was huge on doing the uh, group interviews. Yeah, and firing people, not keeping them around longer than they need to be. So hire fast, fire fast. On um, on how Google works, I had no idea before I started working with you guys how Google and and how that helped you to generate leads, and and how the and and you guys building our website for us that was huge. Well, you are a diligent doer. I'm not sure what's wrong with you, but I wish that more people had. That same problem. I, I think can, a lot of people, they, they hire a coach or a consultant, and they want to know what to do, and you tell them, hey, you need to do the group interview. And then they go, okay, I'm not going to do that, though. I call that an ask hole, an ask hole. It's somebody who wants to know what to do, and they're like a hole of knowledge. You tell them what to do. They keep asking. All the knowledge goes down a hole, and then they do the opposite of what you told them because of their pride because of what their spouse is telling them, because of whatever they've been, whatever blog they've been reading, or whatever TED brain talks damage. they. No, no, yeah. I'm serious though, and, and it's just it's it's a tough thing when you have somebody who won't implement. And I can tell you, Andrew has loved working with you. I do too, and I'm so excited to be partnering with you to open up Snow Bear Heat and Air in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I know you've got to head off to church, and I really do appreciate your your time. And uh, uh, you're just you're, you're you're a great American. Thank you so much, JT. Do you know what time it is? Um, four ten. It's it's Tebow time in Tulsa, oh. Jerusalem, baby. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, Whoa. during the month of Christmas, December fifth and sixth, twenty twenty four. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the two day interactive Thrive Time Show that Business Growth good. Workshop. Uh, yes, folks, thing. put it in your calendar. This December, the month of Christmas, December 5th and 6th, Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma and the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business growth workshop. We've been doing business conferences here uh, since 2005. I've been hosting business conferences since 2005. What year were you born? Uh, 1995. Dude, I've been hosting business conferences since you were 10 years old. And a lot of people, you know, have followed Tim Tebow's football career on the field. Uh, and off the field. And off the field, the guy's been just as successful as he has been on the field. Now, the big question is, JT, how does he do it? Mm, well, they're going to have to come and find out because I don't know. Well, I'm just oh. saying, Tip Tim is going to teach us how he organizes his day, how he organizes his life, how he's proactive with his faith, his family, his finances. He's going to walk us through his mindset that he brings into the gym, into business. It is going to be a blasty blast in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Folks, I'm telling you, if you want to learn branding, you want to learn marketing, you want to learn search engine optimization, you want to learn social media marketing, that's what we teach at the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive workshop. If you want to learn accounting, you want to learn sales systems, you want to learn how to build a linear workflow, you want to learn how to franchise your business, that is what we teach at the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop. You know, over the years, we've had the opportunity to feature Michael Levine, the the PR consultant of choice for Nike, for, for Prince, for Michael Jackson. Jackson. We've had the top PR consultant in the history of the planet has spoken at the Thrive Time Show workshops. We've had Jill Donovan, the founder of RusticCuff.com, a company that creates apparel worn by celebrities all throughout the world. Jill Donovan, the founder of RusticCuff.com, has spoken at the two-day 
interactive Thrive Time Show business workshops. We have the guy, we've had the man who's responsible for turning around Harley Davidson, a man by the name of Ken Schmidt. He has spoken at the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops. Folks, I'm telling you, these events are going to teach you what you need to know to start and grow a successful business. And the way we price the events, the way we, we do these events, is you can pay $250 for a ticket or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes! We've designed these events to be affordable for you, and we want to see you live and in person at the two-day interactive December 5th and 6th Thrive Time Show Business Workshop. Everything that you need to succeed will be taught at the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show Business Workshop, December 5th and 6th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the way we do these events is we teach for 30 minutes, and then we open it up for a question and answer session so that wonderful people like you can have your questions answered. Yes, we teach for 30 minutes, and then we open it up for a 15-minute question and answer session. It's interactive. It's two days. It's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've been doing these events since 2005, and I'm telling you folks, it's going to blow your mind. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshop is America's highest rated and most reviewed business workshop. See the thousands of video testimonials from real people just like you who've been able to build multi-million dollar companies. Watch those testimonials today at thrivetimeshow.com simply by clicking on the testimonials button right there at thrivetimeshow.com. You're going to see thousands of people just like you who've been able to go from just surviving to thriving. Whoa. Each and every day, we're going to add more and more speakers to this all-star lineup. But I encourage everybody out there today, get those tickets today. Go to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. And some people might be saying, well, how do I do it? What do I do? How does it work? You just go to thrivetimeshow.com. Let's go there now. We're feeling the flow. We're going to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, you just go to thrivetimeshow.com. You click on the business conferences button and you click on the request tickets button right there. Um, the way I do our conferences is we tell people it's $250 to get a ticket. Yep. Or whatever price that you can afford. And the reason why I do that is I grew up without money. Uh, JT, you're in the process of building a super successful company. Um, yep. Did you start out with a million dollars in the bank account? No, I did not. Nope. Did not get any loans, nothing like that. Did not get an inheritance from parents or anything like that. I had to work for it. And I, uh, I'm super grateful I came to a business conference. That's actually how I met you, met Peter Taunton. I met all these people. So if you're out there today and you want to come to our workshop, again, you just got to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You might say, well, who's speaking? We already covered that. You might say, where's it going to be? It's going to be in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma. And someone says, Tulsa, Jerusalem. Uh, it's, I'm really trying to rebrand Tulsa as Tulsa, Jerusalem, sort of like the Jerusalem of America. But if you go to, if you type in Thrive Time Show and Jinx, you can get a sneak peek or a look at our office facility. This is what it looks like. This is where you're headed. It's going to be a blasty blast. You can look inside, see the facility. We're going to have hundreds of entrepreneurs here. It is going to be packed. Now, for this particular event, folks, uh, the seating is always limited because my facility isn't a limitless um convention center you're coming to my actual home office and so it's going to be packed who you you're going to come who you I, I, i'm talking to you you can just get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com and again you can name your price we tell people it's 250 dollars or whatever price you can afford and we do have some select vip tickets which gives you an access to meet some of the speakers and those sorts of things and those tickets are 500 dollars. it's a two-day interactive business workshop over 20 hours of business training we're going to give you a copy of my newest book the Millionaire's Guide to Becoming Sustainably Rich. You're going to leave with a workbook. You're going to leave with everything you need to know to start and grow a super successful company. It's practical, it's actionable, and it's Tebow time right here in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Get those tickets today at thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and I'm talking to you right now from the center of Hollywood, California, where I have represented over the last 35 years 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestsellers. I've represented a lot of major stars and I've worked with a lot of major companies. And I think I've learned a few things about what makes them work and what makes them not work. Now, why would a man living in Hollywood, California, in the beautiful sunny weather of LA, come to Tulsa? because last year I did it and it was damn exciting. Clay Clark has put together an exceptional uh, presentation, really life-changing, and I'm looking forward to seeing you then. I'm Michael Levine, I'll see you in Tulsa.
Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven uh, 13-point business system that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. When we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, We're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying. And I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same system that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you. I learned at the Academy in King's Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Harvard Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're close, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark, he's a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing but I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who is my yeah. age, and I can say or cannot say? What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. There's all a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne, who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old, working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed to the business owner to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you, thank you so much for allowing me to to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. Well, not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. 
Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there too, or bad influencers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much. And thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy, King, Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa.